Brooke is here for a viewer managed marketplace update. Let's let yes. her do that so she can go eat lunch. Yay. Uh, so as I hope you all saw, we launched a beta this week. It's very exciting. And we are, uh, and, and Drax actually launched an interview today with me talking a lot about the viewer managed marketplace. So you can listen to me say stuff that you probably all already know if you'd like to, to hear that interview. Um, one other thing that we're working on right now is scheduling a follow-up to get some additional feedback from users. We're currently looking at probably next Friday around 11. And we, let's see, one other thing um, that I wanted to bring up was... We also are, uh, there were some comments on the forums about migration and will we be trying people out first? And yes, yes, we will. Um, we'll be actually asking, um, using our test accounts on production and then getting some volunteers to, yes, this is, this is on production right now. And, uh, the FAQ tells you, has a link for where to sign up to get access. We'll be opening it up broader to everyone, but we wanted to be careful about giving everybody access right away because it's always better to be cautious in our experience. Uh, anyway, I was I was saying we'll also be, um, as part of the migration process, we'll be, we'll be getting some people to volunteer initially. Uh, and uh, and then we'll be moving forward with with migration. Um, we expect the localized versions of things to be out probably in a couple of weeks. And um, so we're keeping an eye on VMM bugs that come in, and would love to hear about any issues that people have seen. We have a we have a couple of edge case crashes that we've been looking at. Um, and and so far, those are the main things that we're we're fixing. Uh, yes, you said it has broken several things and crashed servers and such before. Um, yeah, so we're looking we're looking at at that. Um, we did we were on a DD for a while before we moved to the production grid. Yeah, I, other... I, they've been pretty cautious about this one, so I, I think I think uh, people should not be too spooked about trying it out. Oh yes, oh yes, definitely, it has, and that's why we've been cautious and letting everybody get on. And once we're once we're feeling more comfortable about people all trying it out, we'll open the beta up more broadly. And then once we're feeling comfortable there, we'll give everybody access in production. Um, and, and really, really sit as a production feature. It'll be part of the viewer, and so it'll be much easier for people to find it and get moving over. Any other so, questions? Questions? Issues? If not, I'll make sure that the invitation for the feedback session gets shared with you all, and you are welcome to come and listen to the feedback that we'll hopefully get this time from users. Right. And uh, by the way, that, that viewer is fully merged up to what is now viewer release, the subgrade viewer. So <laughs> what am I having for lunch? Uh, I have some homemade crock pot, chicken something or other that I made a couple of weeks ago and froze. It's not very exciting. <laughs> anyway, now that you know what I'm going to have for lunch, I am going to go eat it. Uh, but as always, if you, if you see any really big issues, feel free to reach out to Oz or directly to me. I'm Brooke at LindenLab.com. So, thanks, okay. everyone. Bye. Thanks, Brooke. Uh... Okay, um, before I forget, um, I warned you last week that um, for the summer we will be having having uh, a, 
slightly less regular schedule because we're going to have to dodge uh, scattered days I'm going to be taking off um, and other other events. Um, so our next third-party viewer dev meeting is in one week, not two weeks. So um, May 1st, May Day. So um, don't miss it. Oh, uh, I'll make a note of that. Uh, I, I I have already put a note about it on the on the agenda page, but I'll try to remember to send out a reminder on the on the mailing list too. Um, okay, uh, the pipeline viewer pipeline. Uh, quickly, uh, as you know, tools update got promoted. Yay! Uh, long, long road, uh, but it's a uh, it's less crashy than other recent viewers have been. So we actually did get something out of it besides better tools, um, which is which is nice. Um, and uh, every, so, as I said, the viewer managed marketplace has already been merged up to that. It's uh, just under two percent better than it was. Um, oh, that's that's a big jump, actually. That's that's actually pretty nice. Uh, you know, I, I'm still not. I, let, let me let me be completely clear. I'm I'm embarrassed and dismayed by the crash rate, and I always have been. It needs to be. Way, way, way better than it is now. Proud of. But we have a very, very difficult set of conditions here. Maybe we can never get it there. We'll keep trying. Um, uh, the viewer managed marketplace I, I already mentioned is already merged up to that release. They had decided to do that merge early, so they're very good shape now relative to the tools. Um, the other things that are in the pipeline are all in the in the process. Uh, I'm going to talk more about Linux in a minute. Um, we'll get back to that. Um, uh, so uh, we'll be getting new versions of all the project viewers over the next week or so. Uh, and the attachments viewer will move to a release candidate very shortly. Probably when it gets updated to this set of tools. Uh, we're also going to start work on updating the Oculus Rift viewer, which hasn't seen any love in a long time. So uh, I'm not sure how quickly that will go because it got to be pretty terribly far behind. But we're going to get that back back into more active state. So all of that stuff is happening. Um, so you'll be seeing a, a, a new crop of project viewers and release candidates over the next so. Um, so, um, and uh, another project I want to talk about is the uh, um, the effort to replace the web media handling with Chrome Embedded Framework. Um, we're making pretty good progress on that on Windows, a little slower on the Mac, but we are making progress uh, and we're getting some outside help, uh, specialist help there that I think will help. Um, and um, we have done a little bit on Linux, but that highlights uh kind of general statement about Linux that I wanna that I wanna say to the especially to the third party viewer and open source community. Um given the extremely low number of users who actually use the Linux viewer um and the and 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 the constraints I have on the many things we want to get done, we've got some uh, I throw out one of my classic teasers here. We're going to start on some really cool things uh, in the next month or so um, that I'm not going to tell you about, but we are going to be doing work on them. And if we're successful with them, you really like it. 
Um, but um, the I just don't have I don't have I don't have the time to put people on doing a lot of Linux work. I just don't. So if there's going to be a working Linux viewer, the Linux user community is going to need to pitch in and help get it done. Because, frankly, if it doesn't work, um, I can't afford to fix it. So um, I, I have not been getting Linux contributions. Uh, and... Uh, I what I what I get is occasional complaints that this or that thing doesn't work in in Linux, and uh, I'm a former Linux developer for several years, um, and the and the ethos there is that the community is what makes it work. And what I'm saying to the Second Life Linux community is, if you want it to work, you're going to have to help. We will integrate. We will provide build services. We will publish the results, but I'm basically not going to do the development. So, if uh, if it's not working, it's likely to stay broken, and that may well include uh, all media handling, unless unless we get hell up with it. So I'll, uh, I'll pass that on to Jess. So. Uh, that's 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 probably pretty much the way it's going to be, um, and I and I hope that having said this, I will get a bunch of people step up and start doing things and give me a lot of integration work to do. Uh, that's my fondest hope. Um, so, uh, so uh, next time you hear somebody complaining about things not working on Linux, tell them I invited them to. Help. Um, uh, under the new topics banner, um, snapshots to emails. A couple of people spotted the fact that one of our maintenance branches is removing the send a snapshot as email feature from the viewer. Um, yeah, I can think about doing that, Whirly. Um, I don't know whether I will or not, though, frankly. Um, but I'll think about it. I'll talk to a couple people about it. Um, the, a couple people spotted the fact that in one of our maintenance branches, the snapshots, send a snapshot as email feature is being removed from our viewer. Um, the reason behind that is very uh, simple. Um, it turns out that the way we send those snapshots with a, a secondlife.com email address that isn't actually legitimate, um, and we we send them with the senders with if the sender if we know an address an email address for the sender, um, we put their address in the from address, but then it's really coming from secondlife.com. Um, that is a major contributor to the fact that we send emails like that is a major contributor to uh, the fact that lots of ISPs and spam filtering services treat anything from secondlife.com as spam. Um, so because it looks like we're forging from addresses, which in fact we are, right? Um, so uh, that's a that's a big problem, and we want email from secondlife.com for other purposes to work better. Um, and so we're going through all of the things we're we're, we're taking a, a, a broad look at how at what we're doing or not doing um, in everything where we send email uh, that is contributing to the fact that our email tends not to get through as often as we need it, uh, and we're going to change them. And the send snapshots as email is one of the one of the bad things. Uh, it used to be true that the email you got about abuse reports um, had some other bad characteristics that caused it to escalate to to bump up our our spam rating, um, and we fixed that a, a little while ago. Um, 
uh, yeah, we need to look at, we need to look at a lot of things. Um, and, and, and we're going to be working through those over the course of the next few months and trying to fix them so that they either work better and don't trigger spam filters or just stop doing them, whatever they are. Um, and the, uh, the thing we decided with snapshots to email is that we're just going to eliminate that. Um, so we're taking it out of our viewer, and sometime quite soon, we will be taking it out of the server side, too. So um, that feature will stop working for everybody, uh, even if you haven't got a viewer that has removed Yes, I am going to remove it from the back end. So you won't be able to keep the feature. So uh, um, if people want to send snapshots as emails, they can download the snapshot to their computer and send it as an email. Uh, and uh, you know, we're, we're, we, we, when we created that feature, we didn't have the SL share features that let you post to um, social media sites. We do now. Uh, those work really well. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, very, very, very few people do use it. That's we looked at that, actually counted how many email how many times this was used grid wide in a week, uh, and it was it was a pretty small number. Remarkably small considering how many users. No, I'm not I, I'm not giving you numbers. Um but it was it was small. You would be surprised. Um, um so, so um so that's happening. It, it it affects it affects spam filters because spam filters have very sensitive thresholds to certain things, and forged from addresses are a really bad thing that they treat as um, this is the sender of this is almost certainly a spammer, and therefore and and it it doesn't just affect that source email address. So if Izzy sends a snapshot, it doesn't affect Izzy at lindenlab or Izzy at secondlife.com. It affects everybody at secondlife.com. So um, it's... <laughs> um, so uh, it's, it's a big deal. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that it, it's inconvenient if you're in love with that feature, um, but we're going to try to make lots of other things that send email that we really do need to have work well, um, work better by, by doing this and some other things. Um, okay, so that um, th there is an RLV wardrobe out there that I believe does use that feature, if I'm not mistaken, and that's going to break that... Uh, wardrobe just so you're aware of it and warned um okay so let's see snapshots to email um uh Um, yes, yeah, I did. Uh, I was looking at how many times the server facility was used, not not anything about the viewers. Uh, yeah, all email won't be affected by it. That's that's entirely different. Um, I I don't think the security orbs could be using the viewer feature. That's a, it's a viewer. Interface, not a LL email. It's a different thing. I think it's a different. Ninety-nine percent sure it's a different. Um, the but I'll check. Uh, no, temp email addresses aren't aren't much of a help actually. Uh, and besides, people want it to be an email from them. 
Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Other things. Um, uh, I want to um, sort of put out a call to the third-party viewer development community. One of the things that we're going to be doing a lot of over the next several months is trying to make some of the new ways we're doing things more robust. We've got a we've got a, a very active project right now to convert lots of um, other assets that are consumed by the viewer, things like uh, animations and sounds, gestures, um, things that are uploaded to the viewer to be used. Uh, um, we're, we're converting, we're creating, if they didn't already exist, we're creating ways to upload them using HTTP so that we can serve them through the CDNs and make them more responsive. Uh, and um, and get load off the simulators, get the simulators out of the file transfer business and uh, free them up for doing simulation because nothing else is going to do the simulation. Um, and, and we're going to be cleaning up and removing the conflicting old ways of doing things. Uh, that is the, uh, so as we provide new ways, we are going to, um, sunset the old ways of doing things. And that does most emphatically include um, not using HTTP for inventory loading and for texture loading and all the other things that people are falling back to UDP for. Uh, so uh, let me get back to that question uh, in a more... So... Um, so, uh, every time that you tell a user, solve your problem by falling back to UDP, what you're doing is setting them up so that they're going to have a new problem some number of months from now when, we're, when, when we remove that capability. And we are talking months, not years. Okay? Right. So, okay. Um, you know, the... Uh, uh, if if there are reproducible problems or even problems we can investigate with the with the new ways of doing things, I I strongly 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 require request that you you know help us with working out what those problems are and debugging them. That includes uh, using AIS. That includes using HTTP for everything we use HTTP for. Um, yeah, it, it, it really isn't the problem it used to be. We've, we've done a lot to make it better. Um, it, which is not to say there might not still be problems. There might, there might be, and certainly for, for some very small number of users, there definitely still are. Um, we're going to try to hunt down as many of those problems as we can and fix them, uh, either, you know, one way or another. But, um, uh, a lot of these things are um, kind of motivated by a tragedy of the commons kind of phenomenon, right? If we do a lot of things over UDP, we are, hurt, number one, hurting the, the simulator's ability to do the things only the simulator can do. Um, number two, we're, those are actually pretty crummy file transfer protocols. The fact that they work at all is, is actually kind of amazing, um, but they they do so very inefficiently. The worst of all, um, UDP is is bad for the for the network. Um, uh, it it uh, they're not flow controlled packets. They don't. It doesn't have congestion behavior, congestion control behavior. So it the more UDP you send, the more packet loss there is, and that that may manifest on your local ISP links, or it may manifest on our data center end links, or it may manifest at some bottleneck somewhere in the middle that neither one of us can test or affect very, very easily. Um, but uh, it's a it's a very real problem. It's actually a well documented problem. Google Google congestion control and congestion collapse. Um, and uh, the more we can. Um, 
take uh, reduce our use of UDP for things where it's not the only way to do it, um, the better everybody will be. Now, it's it is still occasionally true um, that uh, some individual user will have a situation where they switch off HTTP and things seem to get better. Now, sometimes that's just because things would have gotten better anyway. Um, it's a, it's a little difficult to to pin that down. Uh, but sometimes that's because um, they're the only ones doing it. And uh, the trouble is that if everybody does it, it makes it much, much worse for everybody. So um, I saw that uh, AIS3 was disabled by a recent check-in in Firestorm, and no, I'm not even a little bit happy about it. But Well, to, to, be, to be fair there, Oz, um, we have started uh, warning people about turning HTTP off. Um, yeah, well, really you should check the wiki update that happened over the weekend. Oh, oh no, I, I know that. That is going out as a test uh, to the preview group. How release goes out is undecided. No, I meant I meant the your wiki advice about turning HTTP off. There was a wiki page um, update. In just okay. in the last few days, I happened to see it yesterday. Um, okay, I'll have to check that out. Where it fair, fairly prominently says, you know, try turning off HTTP. Um, and t to be fair, further down on the page, it says, this is not a really good long-term solution. You should think about replacing your router. Um, that needs to be moved up. Yeah, okay. Uh, 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 mister, you want to... Uh talk with uh, Miro about that one and get that one sorted out. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, uh, I don't know, I don't know what the motivation for disabling AIS-3 is, but uh, that should be viewed as, at best, an extremely short-term workaround. Um, that is an area where we are going to be doing lots of work. Um, there are there are fixes for both attachment problems and inventory problems in the pipeline that will be out to you very quickly. You should be thinking about integrating them and then throwing that switch back. Yeah, there's the big bird fixes and there's a bunch of fixes for inventory handling, some of which are server side. Many of which are for server side. We've we've uh, we've actually um, eliminated a bunch of ways that you could previously lose in inventory, and I do mean eliminated. We uh, remember we did that survey a while back uh, uh, about you know have you experienced inventory loss? Well, we actually read what we got back, and it gave us some ideas for places to look, and we looked there, and we found problems, and we fixed them. Yeah. So, uh, it, it, <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. It's really good. So there, there, there are probably some more things to work on there, and we're going to go back and 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 mine that data some more. Uh, see if we can find some more things to hunt down. But uh, uh, so what I'd suggest, actually, at at the very least, I mean, it's. Uh, it, I'm perfectly prepared to believe that the that the Firestorm team should make their own choices about whether or not things are enabled or not. Um, but what I would suggest is that at the very least, all the developers uh, throw that switch into enabled uh, state and then help track down the problems that resolve. Um, but the Big Bird fixes should be out in a release candidate um, any minute now. That may be a slight exaggeration, but real soon. Right, Fear? Yeah, right I'm uh, getting those uh, integrated with the tools update uh, as we speak, or at least after we stop speaking. Um, right. And, Which was uh, a 460 so that, change set merge, so, you know, let's give him a little time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that uh, basically the uh, the viewer side work for uh, for Big Bird is about done. Uh, that's not to say that there are no remaining attachment issues but i don't uh 
I'm not aware of any remaining attachment issues that are related to AIS, and uh, uh, generally the, the remaining issues that we're aware of are actually server-side issues. Um, you know, we know that if you request a large number of attachments at the same time, uh, that frequently some of them won't show up, and uh, we have a lot of reports of uh, issues on teleports where things get dropped and uh, and restored. Um, I, I don't uh, I don't have any reason to think that those are uh, either of, of those are related to AIS. Uh, we're, uh, and we've we've done some investigation on the the first of those, the requesting lots of attachments, um, and we're we're doing more investigation and it does seem to be uh you know issues with uh, behavior on the sim there so uh yeah i don't know how that pertains to everybody else's schedules but uh i think there's a there's a good likelihood that uh you know you'll have the final viewer side changes uh in a in a tools update integrated viewer in in release candidate uh, soon okay um for us i can tell you that we're looking at a release within 10 days uh, we're in. Uh, yeah, I know you're right. You're right on the edge. So that's. Yeah, uh, I understand um, that. That limits your flexibility a lot. Yeah, uh, uh, unless we find a major uh, blocker, uh, we will have a release out uh, in ten days. Right. So, so um, what I would pretty strongly suggest is that you um, expect to do another one um, much sooner than your usual three or four months. Yeah, that, that's the plan. Uh, there'll be a, the, the plan is as soon as we get some fixes, there's going to be another release goes out very quickly, and uh, support will rage and I'll rage because I'll have to be doing more documentation again. And Mira will rage, and you get the idea. <laughs> we'll get by. Uh, regarding uh, bug eight nine four four, um, yeah, the there's there's different ways that you can get the uh, the invalid cough links. Um, if if you get an invalid cough link because of a race condition where you're slamming attachments on and off as fast as possible, um, it will clean that up. It won't. You you will see links that say that, uh, but they'll go away after a while. Um, we we detect them once they've been hanging around for a while and clean them up. Um, if you get uh, invalid cough links because uh, you know you try to wear 38 attachments at the same time and some of them don't rest successfully, we don't clean those up, and we actually don't want to clean those up because that, then if you relog, uh, they'll still be missing. Um, you know, if we leave the bad link in place, then when you re-log, it'll generally get cleaned up. Uh, I mean, it, it'll, it'll generally resolve your appearance correctly. Um, so that's uh, that's where we're uh, planning to leave that currently. Um, so uh, we, we have know, some of the some of the cases where you're just using scripts to uh, uh, you know hang on things very quickly that are basically you know not atomic operations um you know it's 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 basically always going to be possible to to cause bad things to happen that way but uh, i'm i'm trying to uh, resolve those uh, at least eventually if not instantaneously uh, where we can yeah the um the thing with wearing a whole bunch of things all at once um we do have some server side uh avenues to explore on we, we we have traced at least some of those to a particular path in the in the back end that fails when some of the time when you do that not all of the time but some of the time and uh, we're we're digging into that but uh, it's it's actually too early to tell whether whether we know that what the what the end of the problem is but we're uh, there's some hope that we'll that we'll be able to make that better So that's all coming. Uh, so just in general, you know, we're going to be doing a lot over the next few months to be moving things into the direction of more robust services and trying to work hard to make those things even more robust. Um, so I would like to try to get the help of the third-party viewer community to move in that direction rather than continuing to advise people stay with the 
the old tried and true ways because actually the old tried and true ways aren't that great. Oh, wow. uh, we'll be uh, speaking for uh, Firestorm. We'll, we'll be happy to help with that. Um, great. We've we've seen perfect examples of things like that with everybody clearing their cache to get rid of lag, um, clearing cache to uh, solve their teleport problems, you know, and it's just educating them is tough. Right, right. Um, you know, clearing cache. If if somebody uh, if there's a developer out there who would like a really interesting project, I. Uh, I don't have the ability to assign somebody to it right now. We've got too many other interesting and exciting things to work on right right now, and for all the good and bad values of interesting and exciting. Um, but uh, I'm pretty well convinced that uh, there's that a deep study of viewer caching behavior would find some things that could be uh, seriously improved. So if somebody wants to do that. Uh, I would love to support that effort. Well, we'll make sure that gets passed on. Um, one thing we have changed with our uh, uh, clean install procedure is uh, just wiping settings. We're uh, telling people not to clear their cache unless they absolutely have to. Oh, good. We're, it's it's an ongoing I, thing. What can I tell you? I think that's I think that's probably a good thing. Um, I, I think that clearing your cache is usually actually counterproductive. Uh, that's what we tell people. <laughs> uh, I, I can well believe well that believe. that didn't used to be true, but I... I, I... Yeah. Um, basically, what we do now is we, we, in our classes, we give them two scenarios. One, when you log in with a cache that's not empty, and then we uh, talk them through what happens uh, when you log in with an empty cache. And... Uh, uh, a lot of them are quite surprised. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, I think that was all of my news and rants for the day. Um, you have something that says make it cash small? And yeah, is he? Uh, in, oh, in, yeah. In, well, the, the the qualifier there is uh, on computers with slow hard drives. Um, that probably should be said more clearly, though. And yeah, that's really the only two reasons we tell people to clear their cache is uh, texture and inventory issues, for the most part. Yeah, by the way, um, so the large flat inventories thing, uh, which we know causes big problems. Um, uh, if you have, you have, you know, tens of thousands of things in one folder, um, that, especially if you've got a slow machine or a, or a poor network connection, it's only poor in a transient way, um, that, that can cause timeouts and, and, Login failures. We, we've talked about that before. Um, we we actually have uh, we are in the process of finalizing QA and deploying um, an inventory transform that will fix that for you. And so, if you uh, once that's once that's in place, you'll be able to contact support. And say I can't log in. I have this gigantic inventory, um, and every time I try to log in, it finds out and fails it. Um, and support will be able to run this transform on your inventory, and it will take your giant flat folder and make a bunch of subfolders in it and push things down into the subfolders, uh, and then you'll be able to log in again. So, um, yes, it's it's very cool. Uh, and uh, and in the process, it will it will sort things by date. So that's how it splits it into subfolders. So it will split split up your objects by age. So the the folder you have with um, you know twenty two thousand things all named object will now divide up into 
boulders by age. So there will be a way out of that particular um, bad situation. Um, one of the things we're probably going to do at some point soon is add a warning to the viewer that if somebody, this is a good open source project, if somebody do it, um, if you, you know, add things to a folder and it's over a, 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 some threshold, several thousand, uh, it should, it probably ought to pop up a warning that says, hey, by the way, this is going to cause you trouble. You should reorganize this. Um, So that'd be it. Forty-four uh, k is 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 well over uh, a value you ever have. I w I would suggest staying under, you know, five thousand personally. I forget what value we used for splitting it up. Izzy, do you know what what she ended up picking? Yeah, I I. I think it was 5,000, but it might have been that. That morally just asked my question. What was, which was, which was that? Is they're going by kind of fast here. Okay, the, I see approximately 10K visible items per folder limit still active with the AIS3 changes. Uh, 10K no, per no. Folder. With AIS, with AIS, you can see everything that's there. If you don't time out your viewer while you're trying to load them. Okay. Yeah, not total inventory per visible in a. No, the problem folder. is never um, total inventory size. That's not a big deal. And by the way, um, don't ever tell people that their inventory size is causing them teleport problems. It absolutely does not. Inventory size has no effect on teleportability whatsoever. Okay. But the, the big thing scripts. that will affect your ability to teleport is how many um, running scripts you're wearing. That's the right. by far the biggest thing. Yeah, running scripts and bandwidth are the two that we've found. If you have, if you have active scripts, so hunt down all the resizers on your clothes that you never use anymore, get rid of them. Um, uh, you know, take your HUDs off while you're teleporting. Um, right, exactly. Those are because the 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 entire state for your script has to be serialized and sent between the two regions, and then deserialized and turned back on again. We stop the operation of all the scripts. We take all of the. We basically take the memory space of the script. Copy it over, um, along with everything else there is to know about your avatar, and then we have to reassemble it all and start the scripts again. And if all of that takes too long, then your teleport time's out. Certainly. Hey, I uh, just wanted to chime in with this. We used to tell people this all the time way back when, but it seems to be uh, coming back more and more. Um, you know, going along with Oz with what he said about the teleports timing out, um, if we're seeing a lot more people that have access list and ban lists and such on the region estate level and on the parcel level and i give them the description of kind of like an airlock where you have to get through two doors each door with a guard at it and if there's a checklist at each and every one of them you may just uh time out before you get through both doors so my advice to them is to just keep the controls either at the region estate list or at the parcel list and obviously mainland it has to be at the parcel list uh, because it just seems like a lot of the teleport issues that I've seen lately, like five years ago, seem to be because of timing out issues. So just in case you guys are seeing the same thing, I wanted to make sure I let you know. It's interesting. Good thing to know. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna spend some time looking at how 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 the back end of ban lists and access lists work at some point soon. We haven't started on that yet, but that has that is a subject that's come up. 
But the, the, uh, by far the biggest one is running scripts. Hmm. What about a larger band list? Oz? Is that some? Is that something you're looking into? Uh, it it it's been mentioned. We're not actually working on it right now. Okay, I'm asking because a while back I was on an estate that had over 500 people on the estate ban list. Uh huh. That's the limit. No, 500 is the limit. 500 is the limit, isn't it? On the estate. 500 is the limit. That's yeah. that's what I'm saying. The the estate ban list was large. You couldn't ban anybody else, even if people were banning on other estates that had ban rights on those estates. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's that's right. Um, yeah. So uh, you know, we're we. That's one of the things that gets mentioned quite a lot is is ban lists and ban list limits and so forth. So it, it is on our list of things to spend some time thinking about and looking at. Um, we haven't gotten started on that yet. Um, don't know. I, no predictions about when that will happen, but it, it is something that's been discussed. Because it comes up now and then. We're trying to hit some of the things that come up a lot. No, just to fill the silence, uh, I'd like to say uh, uh, something. Um, I, I'd like to send some kudos to all of you at Linden Lab for uh, the improvements that you've been working on. It's uh, it, it's entirely encouraging. Well, we're having fun. We we're we're liking it. So we're gonna. <laughs> we're gonna we're going to keep trying to do new stuff. Group chat yep. performance seems to be pretty good. Yep. Um, uh, there's been some huge um, fixes gone out from what I've seen. So, um, we'll, we'll probably get back to doing another round of group chat improvements um, sometime in the next few months, but I think at the moment it it's good enough that we're. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm asking people to work on other things for a little while. Okay. Well, now that I've patted you on the back, I can. Uh, uh, I've now balanced out the book, so the next time I have to yell at you for something that I don't like, I can. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Um. Okay. Other topics before we wrap up. Hearing the end of our time. Uh, Daddy's got a it's comment. Getting close to the weekend. Well, Mister. Um, I I don't know. Um, I, I really can't deal with uh, TOS issues or any abuse issues. Uh, yeah, he gets abuse reported, and uh, the, the problem we see is uh, he's going to fill our group ban list all by himself. Uh, we've got uh, several like that. Uh, we had one in the uh, French group the other day. Um, in the space of two hours, I doubled the size of the ban list, group ban list in the French group. It went from 12 to 24 in two hours, all one individual on separate accounts. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a problem. Yeah, I, I understand. Quite honestly, I understand why it's almost impossible for you to do anything about it. It's the same old story when people start screaming about griefers. Uh, what are you going to do? 
uh, Sam, MAC address banning does nothing. IP addressing does nothing. Um, there's ways around both of them, you know. It's, I mean, quite frankly, there's really only one way that Linden Lab could deal with it, and I pray to God they don't do it. And that is everybody has to be a paid account. Everybody has to be premium. No, we're certainly not going to do that. Well, Alice, that sounds kind of like the old story about Crown, that Crown gentleman that was copybiting. I don't, I don't know the story you're familiar with. Oh, yeah. It was an, old, was an old story in the, I think it was in the knowledge base, about how Linda Lab banned a particular person that was accused of copybiting, got all the way down into a hardware band, banning his hard drive and even CPU. Yeah, um, I, I don't want to. I don't want to get into you know the the mech, the mechanics of of banning and what works and what doesn't. Uh, but you know. It's just unfortunate that some people seem to think that being a pain in the neck is a form of entertainment. Right. And it's pretty much exactly what Ed said. Um, short of limiting region access to um, those with payment information, because obviously not many people that do those kind of things want to put their payment information on an account, everything can be spoofed in one way or another. They're just bits. Um, okay. Uh, what was the? There was there was something that's There's come a up about a couple of times shapes. about avatar shapes. What's the what's the question about avatar shapes that we keep missing? Can somebody repeat that? Just asking, just asking if there was any updates coming for them to do away with the pointy bits, other than mesh. Oh, you mean the. The you mean the the avatar mesh itself? The actual old original system shape before the mesh avatars got put into place. Right. Uh, um, we we have some some avatar tweaking that we're we're working on some uh, new stuff for avatars, but I don't think that's on the list. So we're, we're talking about the uh, the original uh, system avatars rather system, than the, the mesh based avatar. ones. And there's and there's there are various ways you can set the settings so that you end up with weird creases here and there. Yeah. And no, we don't have those. Yeah, ones. that's that's a hard one because of course you always risk breaking content if you try to break any of the uh, you know long standing default behaviors. That's one. That's one we just get. Get cautious about. Uh, you never can tell what some Linden is going to do on their spare time. Remember, that's how we got. Uh, Avatar physics. Okay. Um, I think we're done. Um, Izzy, do you have a minute? Okay, um, silly question, uh, um, sort of, kind of. We've had a, uh, we, we, we've got an issue where um, there's HTTP being used for griefing attacks. Um, um, and we're trying to figure out what to do with it. Um, my suggestion is that we AR and Jira it. Well, what's the new aspect of it? I'm sorry, you kind of broke up a little on me. Um, they're using HTTP to uh, um, grief. I'm not sure of the details. I've just been asked about it now in our team chat. 
in a GDOS aspect? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, definitely if you support it. Uh, and you can also, if the region goes offline, submit an, uh, a report an offline um, case on it because that gets escalated to our internal ops type people uh, who will go ahead and uh, contact ISPs to get things, sources blocked. And My voice cut out for a second. Sorry. You know as well as I do that even those measures, people will find a way around and come back. But if we make it as difficult as po or possible for them, then usually they'll find an easier prey. Okay. So, um, so basically, Jira and AR. I would actually go AR and support case because the Jiras. I mean, you can try a Jira, but I have a strong inclination that you're going to get a this needs to contact support type of a response to a JIRA because it's not really a bug, it's an attack that's going on. Also, word the support case um, just that, you know, it's offline based on a DDoS attack uh, so that way they know, okay, one, I need to get it back online, and two, I need to uh, let our operator know that it's happening so that way they'll actually deal if, if you just get a there's abuse going on on this region in the, the offline case then they're just going to send it to abuse which won't cause the same result okay okay Cool. Yeah, and the only reason why I'm being that specific, Ed, is we get so many reports of abuse to us that it's almost second nature to kind of shunt those over to the abuse people or redirect people back to abuse. I just want to be real clear so that way if one of us gets it, we see it for what it really is rather than thinking it's just an abuse issue. No, okay, and Worley made uh, the point that I was sort of working my way around, uh, you know, if, if there's a JIRA... Um, with the location, time, and date, and the avatar, if we know who it is, um, then you can get at server logs, right? That does definitely make sense. Um, you could put that in the support case, or if you want, do it in the JIRA and make sure that either in the abuse report or the support case, you mention that JIRA number that's been created with the information. Okay, cool. Yeah, obviously, I have no problem with over-information. Whatever source you can get it in on, the better. Um, okay, so the other question is, um, uh, is on a basic membership, will this uh, be oh, accepted as a you, support? Can, can I cut you off for just one second? Paige, um, how often are you getting it's a third-party viewer issue? <laughs> do you really want an answer? Well, I do. Ed, remember before I left the third-party viewer meetings, I thought we had pretty much crushed that. If it's being fairly common now, I definitely want to know because while I have to and my other people obviously have to sometimes say, I need you to log in with the, the SL viewer to make sure it's not a third-party viewer situation unless – it's resolved in our viewer and still happening in that third party viewer situation. They shouldn't be saying, I'm sorry, that's a third party viewer issue. Yeah. Oh, that's, really, that's definitely true. That um, but unfortunately, I have to hold with my team definitely saying, I need you to log in with our viewer first because it's the only way we can absolutely confirm that it's not because of a third party viewer. And that's not. Uh, indicative of any particular viewer uh just in general we just want to make sure yeah uh, i understand that we definitely have the same problem people come in uh, on cas all the time into our support group and say hey Oh, yeah. Or, you know, this vendor object isn't working properly on my region. The region must be broken. Yeah. Or possibly you're on a release candidate uh, viewer that has some different coding on it and it doesn't work with that vendor's object. Okay. So, um, silly one again. Um, finding a support case, can we do that on a basic membership? A support case can file an offline region case. I'm sorry, a basic person can file an, op an offline region case. Uh, okay, but the problem is it's not taking the region stem a lot of times. What do you mean? It's not taking the region name? It's just kicking everybody on the region off. Oh, okay. It disconnects everybody on the region. 
Um, is he what what Ed is saying is very much what happened on this region just after a TPV meeting is that we had an individual brief everybody on this region and it knocked everybody offline. But the region was still up. Could you get back to it? Yes, I yeah. logged right back in on this region. So more than likely not, somebody uh, used some type of a crasher object in the region. Exactly. Or it's like one of those HTTP uh, issues, but that would be a very short attack, so I'd be surprised if they did it that way. Um, actually, they do. You see? That's just nuts. I'm sorry, it's so much easier to use a graphics crasher to get everybody off of a region than it is to do an HTTP uh, situation. Cause you, well, I shouldn't say that. It's not that it's easier, but there's a lot less risk to you, um, you know, getting in trouble with your ISP and whatnot. So that's... Not yeah. exactly a good choice on the hacker's choice, but then again, better for us if we can block them. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So we'll, uh, well, I'll, I'll basically tell our people that, you know, uh, AR, Jira, and support case it and reference the Jira in both the AR and the support case. And on those, uh, this is a third-party viewer issue thing, can we possibly get somebody, whether it's you, Ed, or if you hand it off to somebody else, but let's get that on the an agenda, either every other meeting or every meeting if it stays difficult, but when you guys are still seeing a high volume on it, on it let's put it as an agenda item um, to, to talk about it like we are doing right now, okay. because I definitely want that crushed again. Yep, no problem. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful weekend. You too. Yeah, have a good one, Issy, and thanks for your time, man. My pleasure. Oh, great. Now we got a trailer in one of the groups that I'm in. I'll see y'all later. Have fun. Have fun out there.